Good morning, car guys and car gals. This is Lou Ramirez, the car guy. And this is Fred Lenartz, the subprime hero. And we are here with a very special guest. And you are definitely going to want to hear about what she's brewing. Yes, you are. We have Katie Maris. She's here all the way from Baja right now. She's having a great time. <laughs> yeah. As you can see, she's at the beach. She's having a, She's enjoying life to the fullest like you're supposed to. And this is something that you all need to learn a little bit about, how you do this. So before we do that, get you some, get of, you some of this. You have had key things that have happened and influenced you over the time. So we're going to lead this into question number four. And I'm, I'm right. just going to ask who inside of your career building uh, all that you've built, who is it that has been the most pivotal, mm -hmm. pivotal and influential inside of your process of growth? Ooh. Oh, Ooh, that's I mean, there's, hard. there's so that, that, that you've we won't play the music. You can try <laughs> I, um, there's so many there, there really are there. Uh, you know, if I, if I think back to, um, the acknowledgements of my book, right. And I think about, you know, it took me a long time to figure out, uh, who exactly I wanted to thank. Uh, so first of all, most pivotal from a career perspective would be John DeJulius. Um, I don't know if you know who he is. I'm not but sure, but I do is, know that he worked for his company because I saw that that was that name was mm -hmm. the name of the media company. So John DeJulius is, I mean, he is the authority on customer experience. And mm -hmm. uh, when I worked in town at Town Shoes, um, we were one of his very first clients. And so I saw him speak uh, when I was, gosh, 18 years old, like wow. many, many moons ago. And when I went from retail to teeth and I went into the dental industry, the patient experience was lacking. And so I called up John and I said, hey, whatever we did at Town Shoes, I need you to come and do this with me and I need to, you know, build that. And so I started to create a great relationship with them and I started to help them build their online platform because I was building an online platform and we started to really just be connected. And before you knew it, before I knew it, um, he was flying me down to Cleveland and uh, I had to give a speech. Now, this is what I'm saying. I literally have never spoken before I get nervous. I, I mean, if there was three people in the room, I'd be sweating buckets. And he made me, he came, well, he asked me to attend one of his presentation skills class. And I said, sure. Little did I know it was my audition. I had no idea. Um, and so I put together a presentation based off of his uh, methodology. And I presented it with, with one of his new consultants. Well, about two months later, uh, that consultant didn't exist and in came Katie. So he offered me um, an independent cons uh, independent consultant position with the DeJulius Group. And I was the first independent consultant, consultant and the first female consultant that he had ever had. Wow. And so, uh, yeah, that was pretty awesome. So that's how it all started. If it wasn't for John seeing something in me and seeing that little little bit of a flicker of a flame, that pilot light that he helped ignite, I don't know that I'd be here today. So I'd say John DeDulius. And and the one thing about John is he gave me tons of challenge. Like he he would tell me it's a it's a man's world. It's gonna be hard to, you know, to you're you're I mean he blatantly told me you're too pretty to make it in this world because people aren't going to take you seriously. You know, you're, you're too young, you're too pretty, you're too soft spoken. You're all, so he gave me the hard truths mm. that I needed to hear in order to step up and in order to step out. And, mm. and if it wasn't for John and he's written an endorsement for my book, he's literally there at a drop of the dime for me. So I can't say enough great things about John DeJulius. He, I would say is, literally the instrument that has me speaking on stages today. Wow. He, he is. I, I like this um, guy. But, I'm going to have to do some research on him. Yeah, Seriously. This is definitely. No, you really honor. do. He is unbelievable. Showing honor like that is He's definitely a, what the type of culture that we want uh, to be brewing with uh, as far as uh, the solutionaries that we talk to that have influences that have mentored them, because I think it's so key. We, we share that idea that it's so key that you have good mentorship to help a cultivation, something that somebody that can cut on you, make you better, 
make you, uh, you know, iron sharpens iron, making sure that you are um, increasing your sharpness by uh, being vulnerable enough to let yeah. somebody correct you, right? I mean, I cut mm -hmm. one of my sales people's hair yesterday and came up with an entire lesson and understanding that I'm there to just make him look good. I'm really there to make him look good and, and, mm -hmm. and try to be the best that he could possibly be. But he has to sit down and submit to that process and trust that at heart, I am going to do that for him. And that's what you did. Uh, and you became something that became now a legacy of his. Mm -hmm. That is oh, another great yeah. success You're a part of his legacy. And there's that's so right. much more that you're going to continue on. And that's, and that's uh, being you know, and multiplying. And, and, and that's, that's oh, awesome yeah. that you honor him like that. You know, and it's, it's what's really amazing is how brutally honest he was. You know, he's right. Yes. You know, it can be tough. You know, be. Sometimes being somebody that, that is good looking, somebody that is young, somebody that's, you know, they can be looked at as like, that this person's not going to be whatever. They just think mm -hmm. they're going to get by because they're pretty or because yeah. they, you know, they're young. And, but, but you put the work in, you showed that. Oh, hey, I did. Behind... I mean, I had two choices at right. that point, right? Like I could have had my feelings hurt, which don't be wrong. I shed tears. Like I totally <laughs> did. And, and that story is in my book. Like I shed tears. Um, for sure. Cause I'm like, how could anybody say that? But I had two choices. I could either take it that he's coming from, like you said, submit to the process and trust that he's saying this to help me or he's saying this to hinder me. I, I get to choose that. That's my choice. Yeah. That's not his. Yeah. How, how we react to things is, is only our choice. And, and so he, he was, he's, he is literally the instrument. He is the person that believed in, he believed more in me than I believed in myself. And he saw talent in me and he is the instrument as to why I am, I am speaking today. That's, that's, uh, that's the, uh, the Mickey and Rocky, right? That's the, yeah. that's the, uh, <laughs> the Yoda and yeah, Luke Skywalker, Skywalker right? making sure that you have Miyagi and Daniel son, you know, where you, are you really trying to make me better? And you have to kill pride inside of you that says anything mm -hmm. different than that this person wants what's best for me. And it's that because they actually see it in me they know that there's better in me than i've mm -hmm. even recognized yet i mean the first thing that, that i did when cutting casey's hair was put the mirror in front of him and say you want to fix this right you want this to change yeah. right this is you you're the one that benefits from this you know what i mean you're the one that's going to look great because of this so mm -hmm. you, you want to go through this yes we do okay well let's go and i don't know throughout the whole process you know if it's going to be cool people can walk in and say man it looks funny haha -ha, joke joke and clown and talk about what you look like through the process but when you're done then you have a then you are proud of what it is you become yep. and actually and then some um excited about the process you just went through so that is incredible that you show the honor that you do and i think it's imperative that that's what our culture begins to do is give thanks to those that are due thanks the honor to well and i and for sure. And I'd love to actually give, um, you know who Ted Ings is, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. Who doesn't Ted Ings? Ted Ings? Yeah. yeah, I love Ted. Yeah, so yeah. Ted Ings, I mentioned, I mentioned him in my acknowledgements in my book as well, because he's the first person in the auto industry that, that helped me get my message out there. So, uh, Ted Ings is definitely, um, big deal for me. And so yeah, I thank I him. Yeah, Ted Ings, Ted, Ings. Ted Ings is awesome. I actually love him. And I've, as I've been trying to grow my brand and stuff, he's part of it, you know, and I've been, I've been fortunate enough to have some conversation with him, been able yeah. to network with him a little bit. I'm looking forward to actually networking a little more and eventually having him on the show. I haven't had a chance to invite him, but I think we're going to have a series coming up soon that would be perfect for him. So I'm looking forward to having him on, but he is definitely awesome. very knowledgeable. He's very, I mean, he's got a yeah. smile on his face all the, all time. the time. You know, he just makes you happy when you see Oh, I know. <laughs> most important thing you can wear is your smile. That is the most important thing. Smile. Oh, yeah, no, but so he's amazing and he's, he was instrumental in the automotive space for me. Uh, and then uh, there's this wonderful woman, Neen James, um, who is just phenomenal. She is, you should, she's not in the auto industry, but you should definitely research her. She, she is an attention expert and the automotive industry could use it. Um, her book is called Attention Pays and she's phenomenal. And she's been, um, just such a, you know, a beacon of light for me as a woman making it in the industry. There's not many female speakers. There's really not. So, uh, it, it is a man's world. And, and so she really has kind of guided me through that. And, and so there's, I mean, there's so many people. Um, that or is it? All right, sorry about that. There's something going on.
Okay. All right. Sorry about that. It, Are we good? Be, yeah, I think so. Okay? I hope so. Hopefully it doesn't keep doing that. But if it does, we'll <laughs> be all right. It's all good. I probably got to get good. Um, so, but no, we, uh, you know. But that, no, there's, there's so many people and we're never anything alone. And I. Sorry, go ahead. No, no, no. We, we're listening. Okay. We're never anything alone. Oh, okay. I was going to say. <laughs> Yeah, we're we're never we're never anything alone. We can't. I'm not here because I'm so great. Because really, you know, a lot a lot of even my publicist. So my publicist for the book is like, okay, well, we need like a really engaged author. Um, we need you to be on social media. And and the first thing I say is, I'm not that interesting. Like I myself am not that interesting. I don't know that the world really wants to hear from me all the time. I'd rather toot other people's horns because. What makes me is the people that surround me and the people who love me and the people who will do anything for me. And, and those are, those are the people that truly deserve the praise because they give me the courage. They give me the, um, they raise me up enough. They believe in me more than I believe in myself to give me that confidence and do a show like this or to write a book or to, um, you know, spread my message and be truthful and honorable and all those things. So it's, it's really not about me at all. And it never has been and it never will be. Um, yes. you know, and, and I, I have to, you know, I'll just shout out two more people just because in case they watch this, uh, I hope they do. Thane, my, now they got it. Literally the love of my life, the, the, the other side of the other side of the coin. I did not know what love was until I met him. And, and Aww. I seriously am the most, you know, how you feel about your wife is how I feel about him. So without him and him lifting me up, it's, um, you know, would be especially going through what I went through because my relationship, my ex relationship was just, um, ugh, that's a whole other show we could get into. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah. definitely <laughs> <laughs> that's a whole other show. Um, yeah. and then my grandpa and my grandpa oh, is, man. uh, you know, the greatest story, the greatest storyteller I know. He's my best friend. I talk to him every single day. He's 84 years old. Wow. Um, you know, he raised me when my parents didn't. And without him, I, and my grandma, I, I definitely wouldn't have, um, half of the abilities I have. So it's, uh, you know, he, I'll leave it on that, but he's definitely from a personal perspective, mentor, um, most Christ-like person I know. And he is, uh, he's definitely that foundation for me. Shout out, Grandpa. Oh, Grandpa, oh, you man, are definitely like an awesome guy. a success legacy <laughs> of Grandpa. Um, and yeah, that's, 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 good that's good to honor. It's good to honor him like that, you know, because I know that if he like does you. get to hear this, he'll it'll light him up, you know. Oh, and and, and that, that's, does. that's great. Oh, yeah. Yeah. There's nothing better than there's having awesome people in your family coffee. that can inspire you. You know, if there's one person in my family, if you take away my mother and my father, if there's one person in my family that inspired me, and it's my Uncle Mike, he – just always, just always talked about things that I need to hear stuff that my parents didn't know about. You know, they weren't, my parents weren't the best with money. My parents weren't the best with getting ready for retirement, but my uncle was. Mm -hmm. So if there's anybody that was trying to mm -hmm. give me advice at a young, I mean, I'm talking like the time I was like 10 and up, he was like, listen, you need to start doing this. I think he knew my father didn't. Yeah. So he was like, listen, Fred, yeah. <laughs> you need to do this. You need to do that. So I do honor him a lot when it comes to, when it, when it comes to being responsible with your money, being able to think about the future, I, I give that a lot to my, my uncle Mike. Um, that's but, awesome. Yeah, no, so it's good to be able to honor family like that. And it's good you have people in your family. Like I, I mean, I think that everybody, that everybody, every person that you come in contact with can be a source of inspiration for you if you so choose to see it. And so, so I mean, I, I, you know, I look at, so my parents growing up, uh, they're both, you know, alcoholics, both addicts. I raised my brother and sister, like they were really not anywhere to be found. Um, but then six years ago in my thirties, my dad became sober. And oh, so wow. I look at him now wow. and we have this awesome relationship and he's, awesome. I literally cut him off in my world. And now I have this relationship with this man who is literally the strongest man I know now, like to the more you learn about this disease, the more you learn about, you know, addiction, um, it is truly a disease and it's truly some, oh, yeah. it's demons they fight every single day. And so I look mm -hmm. at him and I think, you know, and even my mom, I mean, they did the best that they could with the tools that they had. You know, they were dealing with their own thing. And now I have a relationship with both of them. But my father in particular, I mean, he's the strongest man I know. And wow. it's just a matter of whether or not you look, how you look at things, right? What lens do you look at? Are you looking through the lens of caring for others, serving others, 
and do you see the good in others or do you, and which is a very victorious lens, or do you look through the lens of a victim saying, well, they're the reason I'm like this, or they're the reason I don't know this, or they're the reason, and you make excuses. And so I think every person, no matter what walk of life they come from, I think every person can be a source of inspiration for someone else oh, if you could open your eyes That's just so enough true. to see it. That's true. You know, you can look at anything. If something negative or positive is in front of you, it's presented, boom. You have a negative situation mm -hmm. in front of you. You can look at it and say, hey, man, that's so negative. I can't stand it. Or you can look at, hey, I'm just not going to do it that way. This is teaching me something right now. I'm actually glad yeah. that there's negative things in front of me mm -hmm. because if I didn't see this, I wouldn't know that I shouldn't do yeah. this, right? So it's all about, like you said, oh, my goodness. the lens that yeah. you look through. It's all about that lens, you know. So that, that actually goes right into our mm -hmm. fifth question.